This is the job information screen. Job information screen is going to contain general information about your jobs. Up at the top here, it asks whether the job's active or inactive. If you turn this off, you'll still have all the information for the job, but it won't be active anymore, which means it's not going to show up on the crew's phones anymore for time tracking. This is ideal when you're done a job. When it's done and finished, turn it inactive. That way the crews won't be sorting through big long lists of jobs of a bunch of jobs that are finished and no longer needed anymore. You don't want to delete a job when it's done because you don't want to lose that data, but you do want it to stop showing up on the crew's phone, make things cleaner and simpler for them. So when you're done a job, just turn it off for inactive. You'll still be able to look at it, but it won't show up on their phones for time tracking. Next up is job name. This is the name of the job or the project name if you've bid it in element estimating. Job type is service or installation. So service is a maintenance type job and installs like a construction type job. Job short name is a nickname for the job. It's basically a shorter version of the job name up here. The reason for this is because of the smartphones. You've got a very small amount of screen space to show the name of a job clearly. So you don't want big long names for the crews. You have to keep it short and sweet so that they can see the name of the job and identify it properly. So your job short name is a shorter version of your job name. Usually 25 characters or less is enough to fit on a phone. Job address is the address of the job. Down here is the latitude and longitude coordinates of it. Now if you don't know these, just make sure you type in the address accurately and click get lat long and it'll go out and do that mapping for you and actually grab the latitude and longitude of the job for you. You've also got customer name and customer address. That's who owns the job and the billing address if it is different than the job. And down here you can also specify up to three links for the job. Now these links will show up on the crew's phones as well when they're clocked into the job. So here I've set up a link to a street map. So if I click this button over here, it'll load a street map to the job. Now if you are out in the field on a phone, you could click the street map link and then hit get directions and it'll take you from where you're currently located wherever that is it'll pick up the phone's GPS coordinates and actually map and route the uh, the best route to this job for you underneath here I've also created a link to a site map so a site map could be an overview from say Google Earth that you've highlighted areas to service for example or in this case I've just put a link to the street view of the site so if I click that you can see that's the site we're servicing. I've taken a street view snapshot of it so my guys are clear that that's the job that we're doing. Next one down I've got link other and this is a great spot if you have a, an account with Dropbox or Microsoft SkyDrive or Google Drive and those are all free you can get large space uh, for documents in any any one of those three. You can upload a document to that drive and then paste a link there and if I hit this cell over here you can see here I've, I've uploaded my job planner to there. So my job planner is going to show the crews how long, what equipment, what materials, etc. Checklist for small tools, whatever you've put in your element estimating job planner. You can upload your job planner to any one of those spots and then paste the link there. When your crews are out in the field on their phones, they'll actually be able to click the link button and open the job planner right from their phone. The last part here asks me whether I'm tracking my time against work areas or whether I'm tracking my time against cost codes. Once you start tracking time, you can't change this. It's locked down because you've already got historical time tracked against one of those. So once you once you pick your option and, and the crews start tracking time against it, you're, you're fixed there. Down at the bottom, you can see I can do delete or over here I can do save. And it'll automatically save any time I go back to my jobs list or use this arrow up here. Now for more information about the other areas of jobs, tasks, hourly rates, activities, hit those areas and then go down here and hit the help button. There's a unique help video for each one of these different areas.